Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Risha and this is For the Love of Classics. I am super excited about Victober and I wanted to film more videos about Victorian literature and while I was brainstorming, I came across the Victorian literature book tag. I knew this book tag existed. I have watched many people film their Victorian literature tag videos and I have been meaning to film mine for ages but I always thought maybe I should read more Victorian literature before I actually film it. I feel like there are so many Victorian books out there that it's going to take forever for me to finish reading them all. I don't want to wait any longer to film this tag video so I'm just going to do it now for Victober 2020. So the Victorian literature tag was created by the hosts of Victober, I think in the year 2016. The hosts that year were Katie from Books and Things, Kate from Kate Howe, Ange from Beyond the Pages, Yamani from the Skeptical Reader, and Alicia from Ex Libris. I hope I'm not missing any names out. I'm going to link the channels down below. They came up with a bunch of questions regarding Victorian literature and I think some of them are really, really fun. So without further ado, let's just start the video. So the first question is, what is the first piece of Victorian literature you ever read? The first Victorian book I ever read was Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I read it in the year 2008, that's 12 years ago. And I remember it was my winter break from school and I read it back then. I thought it was cool but creepy. I know it's a classic which everyone loves and I gave this book a two star when I read it. I want to revisit this book badly because I want to know if I missed anything, was I too young to understand it? I want to know what am I missing? I think this was the exact edition I read it from because this edition belonged to my sister. I borrowed it from her when I was reading it and I haven't returned the book to her since. I also have an entry in my journal about how I felt about Jane Eyre and I thought that the writing was good but the book was a bit, you know, creepy. So I think it's definitely time for me to reread this classic. So the second question is, which is your favorite Victorian book? And it is for me, without a doubt, Middle March by George Eliot. I read this in the year 2017. It took me a month to finish reading this book. And I remember it was hard to get into the actual story because the first couple of chapters were very intimidating. But once I got into the actual story, it got so much better. I loved so many things about this book. One of the things I remember loving the most about this book is that the narrator of the book was so intelligent. The narrator showed us these characters which were so human, so flawed. Every character was complex, their stories were so different and how all these characters in this provincial town of Middlemarch came together, how their lives are intertwined with each other's was so excellently portrayed in this book that it just blew me away. Not one character in this book was perfect, they were all flawed people but that's what made these characters so special in my eyes. Some of my favorite characters from this book are Dr. Lydgate and maybe even Miss Brooke. Um, I also really liked one of the minor characters in the book. Uh, she was Mary's mother. I thought she was such an honest, sweet character. But this is one book which has stayed with me and I know whenever I reread this book, I'm going to get even more out of it. If someone asks me, why do you love Victorian literature? This is the book which I'll show them. This book has everything which makes Victorian literature so great. It has an amazing story, excellent writing, a powerful narrator, and it's just one of those books which will make you think about the people around you and will make you the more wiser for it. The next question is, who is your favorite Victorian author? I wish I could say George Eliot because I love Middlemarch so much. But I feel like I haven't read much of her other works to know that for sure and I don't want to jump to conclusions very quickly. Apart from George Eliot, I have read a lot of books by Charles Dickens, by Thomas Hardy, by Elizabeth Gaskell and the Bronte sisters. I love books by Hardy, Gaskell, Anthony Trollope, so many authors to choose from. But if I had to choose one, I think it's going to be Charles Dickens. The reason for that being I have enjoyed so many of his books and enjoyed them immensely. 
I loved Hard Times by Charles Dickens. It was one of his shorter works, but so powerful. I really enjoyed David Copperfield. Even though this was such a long book, it was a journey worth taking. I remember loving Little Dorrit by Charles Dickens when I was reading it. I was so invested in the story. I loved every character. It was funny. It just transported me to another world. That's the thing with Charles Dickens writing. He just takes you to places you have never been before, you have never seen before, you never even knew existed. His characters may not be the most realistic, but they are so funny and so big. They stay with you. Some of his characters are so quirky, but you have seen people around you with same character traits. And that's what's relatable about these funny, Dickens characters which may seem wild at times but they are a combination of all these things which we see in people around us. I also want to give a couple of honorary mentions because it would kill me otherwise. I also absolutely love Thomas Hardy's writing. He has such a unique writing style. I've never read any books like his before. The pictures of places he draws with his pen transport you to such amazing places. I feel like describing people and persons can be an easy thing, but describing a landscape requires so much more. Um, many people do it, but unfortunately not with great success. But Thomas Hardy did it perfectly and his writing is just beautiful. Two of his books which I absolutely love are The Return of the Native. This was the first book by him I ever read and Far From the Madding Crowd. His stories are about people who are so simple and grounded. They are people living in the country and the way he describes these people is so brilliant. He makes the life of these simple people so interesting by his words and that's what I love about his writing. So the fourth question is your favorite Victorian literary couple. Immediately, I thought of Margaret Hale and John Thornton. They are both such powerful characters. They both have strong opinions and the clash of their opinions, the clash of the North and South, the gentry and the hardworking was such a treat to read about. And how they came to understand each other's perspective was beautifully done by Elizabeth Gaskell. But I feel like this is such a cliche answer. Who doesn't like Margaret Hale and John Thornton? So I was looking at my books for other literary couples from the Victorian books which I loved and the one which came to my mind was Agnes Grey and Edward Weston. The reason why I thought their romance was so special and this couple was so powerful is because their courtship was so innocent and gentle. They are both very quiet people, they are both very humble trying to help others out and they are the best people for each other. It felt like Agnes Grey was alone, the only good person in the world, and then she finds her better half. It was a simple love story, but yet so powerful. The fifth question is your favorite Victorian literary villain. One of the Victorian writers who writes about villains in such an excellent way is obviously Charles Dickens. I read David Copperfield earlier this year. I absolutely hated the villain in this book. There are a couple of villains in this book and all three of them I would say are extremely creepy and wicked people. The first one being Mr. Murdstone who is the stepfather of David Copperfield. He is such a chilling character and he's a proper villain in the sense that he abuses a young child. The power he uses as an adult over this innocent young boy is just so brutal. I thought Charles Dickens did an excellent job in describing that character. And then there is Mr. Murdstone's sister who is also extremely evil. But the third villain in the book is Uriah Heep who is described in such an amazing way by Charles Dickens that you end up hating him from the core of your existence. I wish I had highlighted the parts where Uriah Heep is described in this book. Um, that's one villain which has stuck in my memory. I remember his creepy voice. I can see his greasy hair and his evil demeanor. The way he talks, the way he 
walks are all excellently described by dickens in this book i think charles dickens did an excellent job with all these villains in the book i also really like one of the characters in anthony trollope's books the way we live now i'm not sure if i would call him a villain per se he's one of the characters we tag along with in that book but he's not exactly a villain he's just the bad guy i would say i'm talking about augustus melmott he is this businessman who has made a lot of money and has come to live in london now nobody knows where he got the money from but he's now a rich merchant who is trying to win his way into the parliament into the elite uh, London society of the time but the way he goes about doing that is just so nasty I'm not sure I remember him doing someone actual damage apart from obviously robbing everyone of their money by asking them to invest in something which doesn't even exist but his character was also very vivid and has stayed in my mind for years the next question is your favorite victorian book in which someone dies of consumption and by consumption is meant tuberculosis so i've read many books in which there are so many invalids and many people have consumption i don't remember loving a book in which someone had consumption and then also died of it except north and south by elizabeth gaskell i don't want to give away who dies of consumption and i absolutely loved that novel i also think someone died of consumption in one of charles dickens book bleak house maybe i'll double check it before i post this in the video otherwise i'll just edit it out but i think someone did you know get terribly sick in bleak house the next question is the longest victorian novel that you have read according to goodreads the longest victorian novel i've ever read is little dorrit by charles dickens charles dickens wrote novels in a serialized manner and they did tend to get extremely long this edition by vintage classics is 858 pages long i think middle march by george eliot is also very long middle march by george eliot is 920 pages long so i guess this one beats uh, Little Dorrit. I also read The Way We Live Now which was extremely long. Uh, David Copperfield by Charles Dickens was 880 pages long but I guess the winner here is Middle March by George Eliot. As I've already said it took me a month to read this book but I absolutely loved it. The length didn't bother me at all because I was absolutely enjoying everything George Eliot had to say about her characters. The eighth question is a Victorian author or book which you love but you feel is underrated. One of the Victorian books I really really enjoyed was The Odd Women. I feel like it is a bit underrated. One doesn't usually hear about this book often. Katie from Books and Things recently did a read-along for for the odd women and I feel like that gave this book a bit more exposure. I had read it before so I didn't participate in the read along but I think this is an absolutely brilliant book which needs to be read more. It's kind of feminist fiction. We see all these middle-aged unmarried female characters which we never get to see more of in Victorian books. Not every girl was getting married before she hit 20 in the Victorian era. So it was really interesting to get to know how these women were coping, how they were working or earning money in a society where it was looked down upon for women to work but they needed to do it in order to survive and the way they went about it was very eye-opening. And the interesting thing is that George Gissing was a guy and he decided to write about these strong, powerful women who were, you know, making their way in the world in a society where they didn't have many options. So I think this book needs to be read more definitely and I plan to read more books by George Gissing as well. I think I'm going to enjoy his works because he's exploring very different themes from other Victorian writers. It is Oliver Twist from the Vintage Classics Dickens series. I love the cover of this one. It has these beautiful illustrations and it has these black paper ends, deckled edges. It also has illustrations by George Cruikshank. Wasn't Cruikshank the name of Hermione Granger's cat? That's a coincidence. Anyways, it also has illustrations which I really enjoy looking at when I'm reading a Victorian classic. So I absolutely love this edition. But I feel like the easiest 
editions to read from which are also extremely beautiful are the penguin english library editions i love how floppy they are how easy to read these books are from and i love their covers they are so unique and i love the repetitive pattern which is unique for every book finally 300 victorian books which you want to try there are so many victorian books on my tbr pile which i want to try out soon I really want to read something by George Eliot soon. The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot is one I am looking forward to the most at this moment. The Mill on the Floss, based on George Eliot's own experiences of provincial life, is a masterpiece of ambiguity in which moral choice is subjected to the hypocrisy of the Victorian age. Another Victorian book which I want to read soon is Willette by Charlotte Bronte. This is the only Bronte book I haven't read yet so I really want to read it and I really hope I like this one. Lucy Snow is alone without friends or family. When she sets sail from England to find work at a girls boarding school in the town of Willette, she struggles with unruly pupils and with her own troubling passions. First for the school's English doctor and then for doctoral professor Paul Emanuel. I recently bought two books by George Gissing and talking about the odd women made me want to read them ASAP. Uh, the first one is The Whirlpool by George Gissing and then the second one is New Grub Street by George Gissing. I'm not sure which of these two I will read first but I really want to. So The Whirlpool is about Harvey Rolf. He's a confirmed bachelor until he meets the fascinating musician Alma. Restless, ambitious, dissatisfied, through the story of their doomed marriage, one of jealousy, faithlessness and financial disaster, the whirlpool creates an unforgettable picture of the maelstrom of late Victorian London as its cast of characters cling desperately to their respectable world of gentlemen's clubs and private incomes, terrified it will be swept away. Written in the shadow of George Gissing's own unhappy domestic life, his astonishing 1897 novel encapsulates the glamour and darkness of the end of a century. And then New Grub Street is another book which sounds super interesting. Amid the low-end publishers and cheap bookshops of Grub Street, the novelist Edwin Reardon is battling to make a living. While his friend Jasper, a striving young reporter, writes anything the market demands, Edwin's determination to maintain his artistic integrity means that his life, career and marriage soon reach crisis. So there are so many Victorian books I want to read soon. I want to read more Anthony Trollope. I really want to read the second books in the Barsetshire Chronicles series by Anthony Trollope and also the Palliser series by Anthony Trollope. I have read the first books in both these series and I absolutely loved them and I cannot wait to read more. So the last five questions in this Victorian literature tag are really fun. Favorite Bronte book, favorite Dickens book, favorite Hardy book, favorite Gaskell book and favorite Trollope book. I really like this part of the tag because choosing one favorite Victorian book is pretty hard. I'm glad I chose a George Eliot book for that question so I can choose my favorites from these authors separately. So my favorite book by the Bronte sisters is Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. The reason I love that book so much is because it's short, it's simple, it's engaging, it has a beautiful love story and is very heartwarming. The second contender would be The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. I feel like that's a very powerful book as well, but I definitely prefer Agnes Grey to The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. My favorite Charles Dickens book is Hard Times by Charles Dickens. It was very difficult to pick a favorite for Charles Dickens because I absolutely love Little Dorrit and also Bleak House but the one which I fell immediately in love with was Hard Times by Charles Dickens. It's very unusual for Charles Dickens book to be small but this one is. I feel like this book is a bit different from his other books but it does have a cast of outstanding characters. This book was small but impactful. The writing was beautiful. It was deep without being very overpowering and I absolutely loved everything about this book. My favorite Thomas Hardy book would be Far From the Madding Crowd. I thought that the love triangle in the book was, wait, love square. Yeah, the love square in Far From the Madding Crowd was so brilliant 
and I love the character of Bathsheba Everdeen. She is tempted by you know money and passion she is pursued by different types of suitors all three of her suitors represented something very different one suitor was all passion one was all gentleness the third one would bring in a lot of um, money in the bargain but she made a very wise and um, brave decision she is a strong independent woman but she does have insecurities the best thing about the book was the writing i loved every sentence in that book it was a magical book and the writing in the book was absolutely brilliant my favorite elizabeth gaskell book would be north and south i love that book so much i could reread it like dozens of times and i wouldn't get bored it's a social novel it also has a love story. We see this one person from the south of England and the other from the north of England, how those two parts are very, very different from each other and yet they share something in common. I also really enjoyed Wives and Daughters, but I feel like that is a very long book and North and South is the best. It has the perfect length, the perfect characters, the perfect story. My favorite Anthony Trollope book is The Way We Live Now by him. The reason I love that book so much is, first of all, it is a standalone novel, so you don't have to complete a series in order to, you know, get more from the characters. Secondly, it's a very unique story. I have never come across something like that. Anthony Trollope is a subtle genius. Uh, he's telling you a simple story, but the way he tells it is so in captivating he captivates you with his words with the plots in the book the way we live now has a great villain it has some really stupid characters in it which are very excellently explained by trollope you see the best the society has to give in this book and also the worst that it can come up with i also really enjoyed his book can you forgive her i felt like the characters in that book were more mature and more complex but i feel like I need to read the complete series in order to get the most from them and that is why I feel like The Way We Live Now is a complete awesome book in its own right because it's just you know one book and it gives you everything it has to regarding these characters. So that's definitely one of my favorite books by Anthony Trollope. I really hope this video isn't too long. Making this video has made me fall in love with all these Victorian authors and books once again. I feel like Victober does that to you. I feel like it reminds us all how much we love Victorian literature. I'm so glad to be participating in Victober this year as well. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If there are any more tag videos which you enjoy watching, let me know down in the comments. I would love to do them. It's always fun to sit down and film a tag video. I hope you all enjoyed this and got some recommendations out of it. I'm going to see you all in my next video very very soon inshallah. Bye!